AM Weather is made possible by grants from the Federal Aviation Administration, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, the AOPA Air Safety Foundation, National Aviation Insurance when personal service makes a difference, Phillips 66, providing products and services to pilots at 800 FBOs, and ESD Weather Systems. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to AM Weather. I'm Carl Weiss. And good morning. I'm Wayne Winston. Well, since this time yesterday morning, there's been some heavy rain from the Gulf Coast, the Ohio Valley, and some locally heavy snow in parts of Minnesota and North Dakota. Well, let's look at our satellite motion during the past 24 hours and see what's been happening. Now, the rain's uh, not as heavy as they were uh, during the uh, previous 24 hours, Tuesday to Wednesday morning, when they had torrential rains in parts of northeast Texas and into uh, northwest Louisiana. But still, two to three inches of rain was pretty common with these thunderstorms from the uh, southeastern part of Louisiana across southern Mississippi, south central uh, parts of Alabama. Uh, two inches or more of rain reported since yesterday morning at uh, Macomb in Meridian, Mississippi, and over towards Montgomery, Alabama. Wind gust to 66 miles per hour at Birmingham uh, when the thunderstorms passed through during the evening hours. Two reports of tornadoes yesterday, uh, one in Mississippi and one in Kentucky, uh, caused some damage, but uh, no reports of any injuries. And that heavy rain extended northward to Miami Town in southern parts of Ohio, where they've had more than two inches of rain. Then we had a second area of showers and storms you see developing out in the uh, south central plains here, Kansas and Oklahoma. And uh, during the evening hours, uh, golf ball size hail reported in parts of uh, Woods and Alfalfa, Alfalfa County, Oklahoma. Now, as we head northward, there were some locally heavy uh, snow in parts of uh, North Dakota and Minnesota, anywhere from 6 to 11 inches in that area with a storm system there. Now, this early afternoon visible picture over the western part of the country shows the uh, skies were uh, um, partly cloudy, the precipitation rather scattered in nature, so we got some sunshine into the northwestern part of the country. Plenty of sunshine across the southwest. We can even see the white sands in the southern part of New Mexico. Let's look at the western satellite motion. As we said, here and there, there were scattered showers of both rain and snow. There was some snow in the Colorado Mountains yesterday, showers in northern New Mexico. Uh, rain and even some thunder showers in uh, parts of uh, northern Utah had reports of some hail there. These rain and snow showers extended northward into uh, Idaho where Coeur d'Alene picked up a quarter of an inch of precipitation and some uh, locally heavy snow in the high elevations of western Montana near Whitefish, Montana. They picked up 10 inches of snow. And with the sunshine across the southwest, got up to 94 degrees in Death Valley. See another frontal system now moving on to the northwest coast and that's starting to produce some rain. In fact, we'll see that if we look at our national radar summary here during the past eight hours. And we can see the rain moving on to the northwest coast, uh, southern Oregon, northern California, where tops are to 17,000 feet. Small area of some heavy thunderstorms here right along the Kansas-Oklahoma border around uh, Ponca City. And those are mo moving east towards uh, Bartlesville this morning. Uh, showers extending up towards uh, Salina, Kansas, and Kansas City. And then uh, rain, showers, thunderstorms from central New York southward reporting some thunderstorms around Macon, Georgia. Carl? Well, the wet weather system continues to soak the nation east of the Mississippi River. We'll check this all out by looking at our early morning Thursday national map. Showers and a few scattered thunderstorms extend from the mid-Atlantic coast westward through the Ohio Valley and southward to the Gulf Coast. Flood watches are in effect from southern parts of Vermont southwestward into southern Ohio. Now, some of these in central portions of New York State are due to rapid snow melt and the threat of heavy rains. Temperatures in the east are in the teens and 20s across northern New England, north of the cold front, while 60s and 70s south of the front from Virginia into Florida. Still another frontal system is bringing more showers and thunderstorms to the Plain States. Hail the size of golf balls hit portions of Oklahoma last evening. And skies have cleared across much of Texas and into Louisiana, giving these states a chance to dry out from the soaking rains of the past several days. 
Farther north, the precipitation is in the form of snow and some freezing rain from the northern plains into the upper Great Lakes. Through the nation's midsection, temperatures range from the 20s and 30s over the northern lakes to the 60s throughout much of Texas. In the, in the west, we have a very quiet weather picture early this morning. A few light showers of both snow and rain falling through the Rocky Mountain states and clouds are increasing along the northwest coast. Rain will follow later in the day. Western temperatures are generally in the 20s and 30s across the northwest and into the Rockies, with a few 60s found in the lower Colorado Valley. Temperature extremes at 6 a.m. Eastern Time are found over at McCall, Idaho at 6, Key West, Florida at 77. Looking at high temperatures expected a little later on, 20s and 30s over the upper Midwest and 30s into northern New England. And an area of 70s from southern California into the Carolinas and southern Virginia, even some 90s in south Texas and the deserts of the southwest. Overnight low temperatures will dip into the teens and 20s from northern New England through the Great Lakes and Plains into the Four Corners area. Once again, it will be south Texas and the southeast with the mildest readings by this time on Friday in the 60s. South Florida will only fall into the 70s. Wayne? Well, time to look ahead now. Check those forecast maps, beginning with the map for later on this Thursday, and we see showers and thunderstorms from Florida on northward into New England. Now, in extreme uh, northern New England, uh, some wet snow will start mixing in with that precipitation. Then we have a second area of showers and storms moving into the mid-Mississippi Valley. A few stray uh, rain and snow showers. We head out into the central high plains, the east slopes of the Colorado Rockies, while this frontal system in the northwest will bring in uh, some mostly rain. We get some snow as we head up into the higher elevations, however. Now, looking at the map for early tomorrow morning, still a very wet weather pattern in the eastern part of the country from Maine to Florida, showers and storms starting to get a little snow in northern Maine as well as parts of uh, northern Indiana and central Illinois. Dry through the central part of the country as we head west to the Rockies though. We do have some uh, areas of uh, rain here in the Snake River Valley and along the northwest coast and some snow as we get into the Cascades and the higher elevations of northwest Montana. Let's look at the map now for Saturday morning. Uh, still uh, wet weather from North Carolina northward into New England and back in the colder air from northern Maine to the upper Ohio Valley. There will be a bit of wet snow dry as we head out into the Midwest and the Plains states, but as we get into the northern high plains, we start getting a mix of rain and snow showers, uh, changing to mostly snow once again in the Canadian Rockies and a few showers in the northwest corner of the country. Here's the map now for Sunday morning. Most of the precipitation ending in the east, except for New England. There'll still be some scattered light precipitation there. A little bit of light snow here around the shores. The upper lakes changing to rain as we head into southern Wisconsin and southward into Arkansas. Dry for the plains and the Rockies. A few snow showers in northwest Montana. Another frontal system. Rain along the northwest coast. Carl? Some adverse flying weather is found in the northeast this morning. Flights coming into Boston can be running as much as 30 minutes late because of low ceilings and visibilities and some strong northeasterly winds. Elsewhere early this morning, we find MVFR and IFR ceilings and visibilities generally through the Great Lakes and throughout much of the northeast due to the low clouds and rain moving in, showers and thunderstorms down to the Gulf Coast and over the southern plains, low clouds, even some freezing rain and snow back over the upper Midwest and some light showers through the Rockies. One significant icing area is found from the northeast back into the upper Ohio Valley. Here, occasional moderate rime or mixed icing extends from the freezing level up to 20,000 feet. Plenty of turbulence as well, thunderstorm turbulence, a few showers mixed into 40,000 feet over the plains to 30,000 feet through the southeast, and low-level turbulence over New England to 6,000 feet moderate and up to 10,000 feet from the Ohio Valley into the southern plains. Then through the evening hours, we'll have the MVFR and IFR weather moving slowly eastward, basically rain through the northeast, some snow over the extreme northern sections, maybe some snow as well back over the western Great Lakes and more rain and rain showers, even a few thunderstorms into the Mississippi Valley, and we'll have some low clouds and rain starting to move into the northwest. Looking at turbulence, we will continue with a mixture of low-level turbulence through the northeast and lower Mississippi Valley, some locally severe bumps with thunderstorms to 45,000 feet through the southeast, and the new front moving into the northwest will have with it moderate low-level turbulence at 12,000 feet. Then early on Friday morning, we'll find MVFR and IFR ceilings and visibilities with the frontal system and string of low pressure areas from the northeast into the Ohio Valley. Basically a rain picture, but there'll be some snow along the western fringes of the precipitation. A little bit of light snow also through the Montana Rockies and some low clouds and sprinkles along the northwest coast. Turbulence once again, low level turbulence through the northeast to 8,000 feet, continuing with the front in the northwest to 12,000 feet and a few more showers and thunderstorms in the southeast with moderate bumps generally to as high as 40,000 feet. Coming up next, we have winds aloft. Wayne has them starting at 2,000 feet above ground level. 
Well, those southerly winds still drawing the moisture northward out of the Gulf of Mexico into the eastern part of the country. Our strong low-level winds, though, where we have this low-pressure area in the western part of Texas, the shaded area over the southern plains, the southern Rockies, indicating wind speeds around 25 knots. Up at 10,000 feet, three areas of 25 to 50 knot winds from Texas along the southeast coast and up towards Long Island, second area in the Dakotas and into the central part of Canada, the third area along the northwest coast. Up at 18,000 feet now. Two areas of 50 to 100 knot winds in the dark shaded area here through the Intermountain region down towards the Four Corners and over the northeastern states. Last stop, 34,000 feet up at the jet stream. We see it uh, running from Oregon to Oklahoma and then picks up again in the Ohio Valley northeastward. In the vicinity of the jet, that's where we have the strong winds between 100 and 150 knots. Now it's time for Weather Watch. Here again is Carl. It's shaping up as a windy and wet day through much of the east. First up, we'll show you a gale warning. It extends along the coast from Eastport, Maine to Merrimack River, Massachusetts. These are for east and northeasterly winds increasing to 35 knots. Small craft advisories run southward along the coast from Merrimack River to Savannah, Georgia. East and northeast winds will shift into the south as you move southward along the coast. Speeds will be anywhere from 20 to 30 knots. A winter weather advisory for snow, sleet, and freezing rain has been issued from central Maine westward through the Adirondacks. This advisory runs from Thursday afternoon through Thursday night. Flood watches mostly through Thursday night are posted from southern Vermont southwestward through southern Ohio. Lake wind advisories have been issued statewide through South Carolina for southerly winds of 25 miles per hour. A couple of creeks in south central Mississippi are under a flood warning. Just one item along the Gulf Coast, small craft advisories have been issued for the Florida coast from Apalachicola west with the Pensacola. Winds will be south and southwest at speeds right around 20 knots. Now, the National Severe Storms Forecast Center in Kansas City tells us that there is a slight risk of severe thunderstorms through early Friday morning from the southern Appalachians westward into the southern Great Plains. Most of Kansas, as well as northern and northwestern Texas, have lake wind advisories posted. Winds will be north and northwest, 20 to 35 miles per hour, and gusty. Now, moving westward to the Pacific coast, a storm warning is out for the west coast of Vancouver Island for southeast winds of 50 to 60 knots. Gale warnings extend along the east coast of Vancouver Island and Strait of Juan de Fuca. Southeast winds will freshen to 45 knots. Gale warnings run southward along the U.S. coastline to Cascade Head, Oregon. South and southeast winds will increase to 35 knots. Small craft advisories are flying south of Cascade Head to Point Conception, California. Oregon coastal waters will have south winds to 30 knots. The northern California coast will have hazardous seas to 10 feet, while farther south, winds will be northwesterly 15 to 25 knots. More small craft advisories extend south to Santa Rosa Island for northwest winds to 25 knots. And finally, small craft advisories extend through Washington inland waters north of Everett for southeast winds to 30 knots. That's all the time we have. We'll see you again on Friday. AM weather is made possible by grants from the Federal Aviation Administration, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, the AOPA Air Safety Foundation, National Aviation Insurance when personal service makes a difference, Phillips 66, providing products and services to pilots at 800 FBOs, and ESD weather.